What's up, you guys? Sorry, this is a weird intro. Filming it on my not-so-focused camera with not great quality. Anyway, I wanted to give you a, just a little bit of context of this video. This is just some clips coming forward. I was going to take my mechanical, change it to mechanical, but do a gear swap, and then I realized I should add a stepper, and then I made a program, and it's like... It's very unorganized, uh, this video, so just watch it, enjoy it, let me know what you think at the end. I did leave all my comments at the end. It's like a 21-minute comment section because I added three videos into it, so if you want comments answered for the next video, you better leave them on this one. Here we go. Ready? Let's go. Oh, here's your update. I cleaned everything. It's actually been over a week now. Look at this place. It's so clean. I don't even know what to do. Anyway, so, um, yes, update. Here's your update. I'll try to make it quick, but you know how I do, I talk. So I had this big wheel up here. I had this shaft went into there. I actually put a, just a little shim in there to get me the right diameter. Wobbled a little, but that's fine. Unfortunately, this spins too fast for this big giant uh, lead screw, which is something I kind of figured might happen, but I didn't want to put a super fine one on there because I do want to move this by hand fast. So, here's what I come up with. I grabbed an old drill. I have a box of old drills. I found the one I thought might work, and then I started disassembling it. Um, this one actually had a bad uh, commutator on it. Looks like it shorted out. Probably could have got it working, but for some reason, I cut the handle off a long, long time ago. Um, must have been using it for something. So, what I decided to do is take the chuck off, which if you didn't know, you can get off, but it is a bit of an interesting nightmare. I actually disassembled the front, held this, unscrewed that, it is actually just screwed on there. And you come up with the clutch mechanism, which is pretty cool. Um, learned how that worked. Now, if you want to know, I can explain it to you. Um, basically, it just pushes on there and it actually slides this whole thing out of the gearbox, which is pretty interesting, depending on how far this is set. Um, so you have the gearbox in there. This has a ratio of uh, 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 450 RPM, 1500 RPM, or 2000 RPM, and basically, if you go closer to the three, it's a more of a one-to-one -one direct, and more to the one, you have less. So now I have the ability to actually change the gear ratio within this kind of parameter of ratios. But at the end of here, what you realize is the part that goes into... I can take this part later, I'll maybe show you, but this just goes into the gearbox, okay? This two-sided flat side. That shaft diameter happens to be exactly this shaft diameter. It is the same diameter. So what I'm going to do is actually just cut flats in here and stick this whole thing into the end of this drill. And I'm going to directly couple. I, I was going to just clamp this on to the actual um, rod, which would have been smart, but the problem is, is I'm, I'm already running out of room and I didn't want to cut this whole back end out. But if I take that out, now I can take the drill and I can put it about, I don't know, somewhere somewhere right in there. And the gearbox only comes back to about where my thumb is, as you can see. So I have enough room to put another bearing over here in a shaft. And then I can just attach this somehow to this in a way that makes sense. Hopefully it doesn't hit a piece of wood over there. Mm, we can carve that out if we have to. But yeah, I'm just going to slot that, stick that guy on there mount this into something else and we'll have ourselves a gearbox which we can then change speeds. Now I could just hook up uh, my own uh, drill slash uh, any any motor really that will drive this but this doesn't need quite a bit of torque. Um, there's a lot of friction on this whole moving platform so it actually needs quite a bit of torque. So anyway I will hook that back up then to this and then it'll all be on one motor which is really what I want. Anyway that's that. I'll let you know if and when I get it done. Just want to kind of give you an update that uh, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, repurposed drills. This is not the first time I've used a drill motor. I've done this many of times for other projects, actually. You can go find them on my YouTube. Let me know if you know which project I used another drill gearbox on. It's been a long time. What? Oh, wow. Isn't that amazing? <gasps> I'm going to get my binoculars! It's so bright. Oh, oh, yeah, it's blurry. Blurry. oh, it's blurry. Imagine that. It's <laughs> so pretty. That is How did serious. they get so bright? Okay, guys, here's your update. I dug through all my stuff. Had to take my hat off for this one. Dug through all my stuff. 
found some Arduinos, found some online source code, did everything I could possibly do, and didn't do very well. As you guys remember, I took this drill apart, tried to get this working, and I realized that I had motors which have uh, gearboxes on them already, which I didn't think were going to be fast enough. However, they seem like they're okay. Not the best, but okay. So I grabbed my stepper motor driver from a long time ago, and I hooked it up to my stepper motor, and then reconfigured this, hooked this up, made a little coupler. Now it's connected to this step down, geared down. It's like 5 to 1 stepper motor. 5 to 1.8 to be exact. Okay, stepper motor. Then I had this stepper motor driver, which doesn't work very well, and I spent way too much time getting it to work, but what's really cool is this stepper motor has feedback control right here. So yes, feedback control. So this is an, a true servo motor, not a stepper motor, but it is a stepper motor with an encoder, therefore closed loop servo motor. It's a stepper servo, but you get the point. So this old drive, if you want to know what it is, it's okay doesn't really play happy with this particular system, but I finally got it tuned and working after days of fiddling with it. Then, I spent days building this. This is a pretty cool open source project, but it's about six years old, and it's just a demo code which allows you to basically t turn your encoder potentiometer, it's got a set, so you can push and set the speed, or you can control the position depending on if you click it or don't click it. Then you can set an end point and an out point. So basically my goal was to set this point and then use the scroll wheel to scroll it over here to wherever the end of my prop is and then hit the out point and then I can just hit a button and it'll go and I can hit a button and it'll go This basically could be controlling a camera slider. So then I got the right idea. This this doesn't work by the way. This code doesn't work. This whole thing works. It's great. I even bought these modules for like six bucks on Amazon. Uh, this LED module that shows my speed and it just doesn't work. I don't understand. I even put it on a couple different Arduinos and there's something wrong with the code. I tried to fix it. It looks good. There's, I don't know. Anyway, nonetheless, here we are. So then, right at my wit's end, after looking and looking and looking, I found this really cool project for a camera slider. Then I realized what I want. I basically want a camera slider, right? That's basically what I'm doing. So I found this cool open source project that instead of adding a display and a click knob and a clicky bits and buttons and all this nonsense, Bluetooth module. And I already had this guy laying around, plugged it into the uh, Arduino. This one's a Nuno, but I will be programming a Nano and installing the Nano on here. But guess what? Bluetooth. Bang! Check this out. Now, instead of having to deal with a bunch of LCD screens and monitors and buttons and all this nonsense, I can just hit the button. And it runs. So we're running. Alright, hit it back. So all that work, this literally took me 30 minutes to get set up. It took me more time to dig parts out of my bin. And the whole code just works. And this is a super cool app design um, by uh, MIT A12 Companion Code right there. And uh, it seems to work amazing. And I can, I can change the speed. Okay. I can change the... Uh, distance I'd like to travel, so let's say I want to go to uh, 20, submit, yep, now I'm going 20 instead of 10, I can even change the uh, acceleration speed, so let's say I want to go very slow, oh, the acceleration speed thing doesn't work all the time, I don't really know why. That's really, really loud, but anyway, I finally have a solution, and I can just whip it up on my phone, set my points, get everything running, and hit, boom, and it'll start the cutter, and it'll run the whole thing. I gotta edit all the code for all that, but I'm gonna hook up some output, output inputs and some limit switches and stuff, but holy cow, that's cool. So anyway, open source camera slider, it's called uh, that. And yes, it's 9.45 in the p.m. on a Sunday night, the only time I get to play with this stuff late in the evenings after all my other jobs are done. There you go, there's your update. Oh my gosh, this was literally driving me absolutely nuts, but 
it finally works. I want to uh, get that to work. Yeah, anyway. I don't know how fast I can go without this thing freaking out. That's pretty fast. So now I can rewind the machine and wind the machine. I actually haven't tried to go too fast. That's pushing the limits. Yeah, it's trying to ghost it. But anyway, since it's got a feedback loop, if it is, if it gets out of whack, so like if I hold this thing, boop, error. So I get an error light, I can feed that back and I can show it on my app that I got an error. But I'll be able to start and stop the uh, CNC cutting and rotations all through my cell phone. Anyway, peace and love, God bless, thanks for watching. I think I'll end it here. I don't know. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just make this a super long video of this whole machine and being built. But that's your update. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Comment. Here we go. Comment response time. Oh, well, it's that time. So I said I was going to reply to comments. So uh, I guess that's what I'm going to do. But I'm going to do it both audible and text. Um, I might just give you a heart and a thumbs up, but I'll say something about it. So, uh, yeah, I'm doing that for every video from the previous video at the end of every video. So if you want your comment answered verbally, put it at the end of, uh, or on the last first video, the same. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. The video posting now, I'm doing comments from the last couple because I didn't do any of them yet. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's get started. All right, first one. I'm not going to read names because I'm going to mess them all up. Uh, but you can see what I'm doing on the screen, I think. So, uh, pretty incredible that you built this almost entirely from scrap parts. Yes. Uh, thanks for that. I'm going to say, awesome. Got to figure out my commands. All right. I'm try I got my hotkeys for pause and record, so I got to figure those out as we do this. But I'll get used to it, I think. All right. Uh, what if... You, uh, what if... Just what if you put a special coating on the prop or inside the prop material so that it creates its own lift? Just by movement slash vibration, just like beetles do, you would then have an air pressure differential slash anti-gravity hybrid. By the way, anti-G is a misdemeanor. Misdemeanor? Mis misnomer. Ha! <laughs> Can't read. Uh, we should say magnetic light. That's a pretty deep thought. Um... Basically, um, Mr. Schalberger did this with beetle um, wings, so uh, I don't have anything to say about that. I don't do too much with the anti-gravity anti stuff. I don't dabble with that much. So, uh, yeah, that's cool. How do I get... Oh, that's it. Okay. Uh, all right, Jerry Coleman. How much for four props? Uh, 12 by 5.4, two lefts, two rights. They look really nice. So, I don't plan on selling props right now. Um, the question is a good question, but I actually don't know if I'm going to be selling props because it's a complicated process to make them. When I get the whole CNC version done, which is what I'd like to do, but may not ever get to, maybe then, maybe then. But basically, anything less than, like, at a 12-inch prop, it's not really... I think it's cheaper to purchase than to make. Well, you get up into like the 20 inch, then they get more expensive. So honestly, I would just buy them. That's my thought. All right, Alan Lorenz, how are you, buddy? Uh, a new meaning for on the rocks. <laughs> so I was um, plasma cutting, and the aluminum flies onto the rocks and like completely coat it. Completely coats it. It's actually kind of cool. But um, I took some more footage of that, but I cut it out of the video. But yeah, um, it is actually pretty interesting. But yeah, new meaning for On the Rocks. Cheers, Alan. And last but not least, um, this gentleman says, Yo, I need some help. How can I contact you? Um, well, actually, um, right here. Right here's the best way, and here's why. I unfortunately don't have a whole lot of time, and uh, although I do read all my emails, I unfortunately don't always get to answer them. So just ask the question here, and I'll do my best. 
All right, so that was all the comments on that video. This video uh, is the next one. Prop Maker Part 3. Hola, Russ. Um, oh, man. Crap. Hold on. Let me translate this. Okay, I translated it. Hi, Russ from Colombia. Dude, that's cool. Your project is great. However, I think the machine would work better with a uh, motor tool and a wood milling cutter. With that, you could uh, do roughing, rough everything, and then once and evenly I congratulate you on your videos thank you so your question is interesting I'll probably have to respond to you in um, in Spanish okay so um, basically if you had a rotary cutter and you were rotating you are limited on the like you would basically have to use a ball end mill and then you'd end up with a radius so if you used a ball if you used a square flute mill it'd be really tiny it would take a long time to cut plus i can't actually cut as thick as i would like so i can put a pretty big piece in there and just cut it off um but yeah i, I actually thought about doing it with that and ultimately i'd rather do it with a with a large diameter circular tool rather than a um rather than a milling tool because of the problem of Basically, you'd have to go over it a bunch of times to get it really smooth. Um, even though, realistically, I could do it with a ball end mill last and start with my big cutter. Anyway, unfortunately, that's what I got, but I did think about it. Okay, here we go. Sword of Truth. I believe you proved the concepts and basic functionality. Great work, Russ. Thank you. I uh, agree with that statement, and... Um, yeah, it was just a proof of concept. Now, in these next videos coming up, there's a lot. Well, actually, the one you just... It's this one. There's a lot of cool stuff where I kind of digitize things, but I wanted to make it all mechanical, but realized it's kind of silly to do that if I have the ability to do it with the electronics. So you'll see that in the next coming video here. This one and the next couple. I look over there all the time, by the way, because I'm just making sure I'm actually recording. Anyway, I got my other screen over there. Uh, this guy says, you, sir, are a mechanical genius. Actually, I appreciate that comment. And although I did design this stuff out of my brain, it's kind of already been done quite a lot. So I wouldn't say I copied what they do, but I used the already thought out mechanical process to do it. I just engineered the actual contraption. Inactivity alarm. My radio says, inactivity alarm. I'm doing some tests with my radio. All right, this guy says a thousand dollars. So the the title of the video is when you're too cheap to buy a thirty dollar prop. This guy says thousand dollars later later you save thirty dollars. Laugh out loud. Wonder wonderful bits of engineering on your duplicator. So funny enough, if I'd had to buy everything, I probably would have purchased thousands like a thousand dollars worth of crap. But I actually only spent twenty dollars on there. Now, uh, what I didn't include is the cutting wheel, which I should have included in this. So I did purchase a cutting wheel, this one, which was only like 10 bucks or something. And then I bought another one that was like, I don't know, 20 or something. Actual saw blade cutting uh, tool, which uh, you'll see in the future of this. And then uh, um, Prom Rock says uh, 30, $30 times the number of props he would have had broken if he was flying instead of building <laughs> that's probably well that's actually not necessarily true because I only built I built this in three days granted it took me longer for the full version but eh, anyway I would have preferred flying but I also didn't have a prop to put on that plane literally that was the only one that size I had all right Jerry Coleman it says also Russ and crew well done well thank you sir yeah I'm not going to lie, I'm still recovering from that weekend. I really worked hard on this project. All right, Rich Spillman. When do you start taking orders, or do you plan on using other materials? Um, I think if I get the CNC version built, I might actually take orders for bigger props. I would make them. Uh, you might have to do the finishing work yourself, because honestly, I can cut props for pretty cheap for you. I just can't finish them. It takes me a long time to smooth it all out and finish the prop completely. So, uh, you know, the price point that I would want to charge is nowhere near what you could probably purchase them off the shelf for. But cutting them and giving to you as raw pieces that you finish yourself, 
might actually be a thing, so let me know. David Null, Prop Maker Part 3 when you're too cheap to buy props should be. Prop Maker Part 3 when you're too, T-O-O, -O, cheap to make props. I think I put that every single place. And, uh, yeah. I fixed it. The best I could. Spelling's not my thing. I'm an engineer. I don't need to spell. I just need to be able to use my hands. All right, Jerry Coleman. Full bridge rectifier, not the same uh, putty half wave rectifier. Exactly. I need the full thing, buddy. That's hilarious. And Patrick Watkins, how are you, bud? Great, he says. Thanks. All right, off to the next video. That wasn't too bad. All right, this is my Merry Christmas video. Um, I am just going to say thank you to you guys via a thumbs up but uh yeah master rival thanks for us for being you cheers i am just me meet me in real life you know I, i'm no different thanks man i cannot read rustaferin pretty bad with names i should not read these names merry christmas to all of you hope you guys are having a safe safe in that cold weather strangely uh the cold weather back home in indiana i'm in uh, nevada so back in indiana it was freaking freezing but here in nevada it was actually like i could wear a t-shirt outside so thanks but i actually wasn't freezing merry christmas hey harris tell the kids that said hi merry christmas russ and all your family thanks man appreciate it darcy does it did darcy change his name to match my name because i changed my name to russ does it no i changed my to russ did it and he changed i don't know if yours was our already darcy does it something tells me you changed it somebody told me i should change my username for the fun of it i'd get more views okay sure it didn't help thought i'd try it anyway uh, i might change it back sometime um merry christmas to everyone zero expectation thankfulness in full effect exactly don't do things to expect something back. Do it because you want to do it and to help, or whatever the case may be. Uh, spaced out of records. Happy Christmas, Russ and family. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to read names. I'm going to butcher all these things. Uh, and a very Merry Christmas to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, wood, brass, and glass. Hi. Hope you're doing well. should probably give you a call sometime. Merry Christmas. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. 3D Maker. Happy New Year. Thank you. Brad K. Haha, <laughs> I've saved that plastic as well. Used some for RC headlights a few months back. Merry Christmas. Dude, that plastic is like awesome. Got a bunch of it down there. It's funny because uh, later some of the kids brought me some after they had taken apart some toys. And here you go. It's like, Thanks. It goes down there. Oh man, you are awesome. I'm just me, but we hey, cheers. Yeah, I know. You're still alive. Thanks. Merry Christmas, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Thumbs up and a heart. Well, uh, thumbs up and a heart. Um, Energy Seeker, how are you? Merry Christmas. Thank you. Um, Russ B! Merry Christmas. Thank you. <laughs> uh, right on, Carl Roy said. Thank you. Um... Hi everybody, happy holidays, Logic MTH. And lastly, hiding the present. So I went back and looked at 204 on this video, and Bear Bear was up on the couch, and I said, what are you doing up there? Hiding presents. That's actually pretty funny. All right, off to the next video. These are kind of boring, because they're just, hey, the end of your videos. All right, strangely, this actually, there's a lot of stuff going on. So, um... Hi, Russ found specific audience from Facebook groups, more popular with content, not YouTube. Purely being electrical based with standards of my uh, region. Pretty sure uh, you got a good following from forum pages to begin with. No doubt your family keeps you super busy on the projects uh, one desires. Hats off for creating such lovely family, family and team dynamic. Enjoy your new year. Thanks. Yeah, um, actually I got most of my following on YouTube and then I created the forums actually someone else created them for me thank you very much and my website and then I kind of manipulated them with a lot of other people's help uh, and for the gentleman who helps pay for that 
basically every month. You know who you are. I love you and thank you. Um, I need to get with you sometime. So, yes, thank you. Um, Happy New Year. Thank you. Whatever happened to your VIC project? It was um, complete fumble, or did you actually get high voltage with resonance on a cell? So, long story short, I didn't get the result I wanted, but I was able to get some high voltage there, but things didn't work the way that I was looking for them to work, so it's still actually a work in project progress. It lives right here in this box, right above my head. One day I'll probably get it back out, because it still intrigues me, and I'll do some stuff with it. One day. When I actually have time that I'm not spending with my kids, because they're going to grow up and I'm going to miss it, so I'm not going to do it right now. Alright, Happy New Year, Russ, and your lovely family. God bless. Thank you, sir. Happy New Year to you and your family. Thanks, Paul. Uh, cherish these days with the kids because they grow up fast. Exactly. Spelled like that. So, um, yeah, I have to. I I have to actually quit doing stuff. I just built this receiver stuff on the back of my radio here in this box that will come out along later from now. Anyway, I need to spend more time with them. Even though I try to spend more time with them, I really need to spend more time with them. So uh, I gotta get out of this garage. Thank you, thank you. Happy New Year to you, Russ and family. Appreciate that. Hope you're doing well. Hope to see a pulse motor build off this year, and a happy new year. Yes. So um, the pulse motor build off is actually a lot of fun. It's so much work that I need a team of people to help me. I spent a ton of effort on that, and although I still want to continue trying to do it because it was a really fun challenge, I need to organize it in a way that makes more sense. Maybe I'll do that sometime. Alright, Russ B. Hi. Here's my feedback. Happy New Year to the Grease family. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, John Bigman. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. My friend. Thank you. Fire Pinto. What's up, dude? Um, I still love that name, by the way. Um, did you ever get that thing finished? I thought you had one you were attempting to finish. Many, many, many of years ago. Uh, mobile cloud storage? Question mark. Nope. Spell it differently. Happy New Year. My resolution is to become a business owner. I just don't have a very wide path to take. <laughs> um, yeah. Spell it differently. That That's to become a business owner. Well, hopefully it's your own business, because um, if you purchase someone else's business, that would be interesting, but building something from the ground up is definitely awesome. There's a lot of work, though. All right, Dayton Axe. A blessing, New Year, to you and yours. Cherish all, sp spare sp cherish all space for crystal crystalline structures. I was going to say quasi-crystalline structures. It should be quasi-crystalline structures. No, that's not it. See the comment above yours. Um, Cheers, my friend. Happy New Year! Thank you. Thank you very much. Ray Thompson, I would say pick five comments because if you have a hundred comments, it would take you all day to answer them all in the next video. Well, if I get a hundred comments and I have to actually respond to them all, I'll probably verbally speak respond to them and not text but um i want to see what we get because honestly i don't think i'm going to get 100 comments i might probably not thumbs up all thumbs up thank you sir master ivo hi russ why did you change the name of your youtube channel so i actually just answered that earlier in this video um someone said hey you should change your youtube name and it will help you grow and he, he might be right i've had the same youtube username since 2006 uh, no, 2007. Early 2007 is when I created this channel. It's a long time ago, so I just left it. Um, RWG42985. So I changed it because he mentioned it, so I said, sure, why not? It didn't help. But I thought I'd try it. I'll reply to you here, though. All right, last question. Smokey the Bear. It's a fun name. How can we support you? And his other question is, also, do you have a new website? No, my website's been the same, rwgresearch.com. I unfortunately haven't updated it in like four years, five years, maybe like six years. 
I really wish I could sit down and do that. I need someone else to help me, to be totally honest. Um, it's not a priority, so it gets pushed off. And how can you support me? You can support me in many ways. There is a Patreon set up. I personally don't like Patreon. I will, um, if you respond to this comment, I will put my PayPal in there if you'd like to donate some funds if you want. But at the end of the day, um, you can support me by watching videos and leaving comments and, um, you know, I'm just trying to maneuver life right now. I, um, I'm doing okay financially for just making it through the every day, every week, every month, paying for things for the kids and keeping a roof and food, those type of basics. But if you wanted to support anything project-wise, let me know your thoughts on what you want to do. And if anyone else along those lines wants to help, I guess just uh, leave a comment and I'll uh, try, I don't know, responding to them. <laughs> Anyway, Smokey Dalbert. All right, I'm gonna. Re Inactivity alarm. I know it's still on. So I, that's it. That's all the comments. So if you want your comment answered, leave it on the next one. Hopefully it won't take so long. I had to do like five videos this time. But yeah, um, appreciate all your guys' comments, thoughts, and um, here we go. Off to a new year. This was actually kind of fun. I just gotta sit down and find time to actually do it. This is Saturday night. I'm actually gonna edit this video and publish it tomorrow morning. So I usually do all this stuff right before I publish it. I don't, I don't like, I record videos months in advance sometimes, but I don't publish them until the day before, or finish recording them because I'm a crazy person. I don't know. Anyway, God bless you guys. Have a good day. Leave a comment if you want to answer in the next one, and I'll see you next week. Bye.